All right, are you ready? Because here it comes. This is going to be the big daddy uh, of them all. So we're going to look at second, second order non-homogeneous linear differential equations. And so I'm just going to jump right into an example. And it's going to take a good many pages. But you can hit pause. You can think about it. You can always just shut me off if you want. But if this is something that you need to do for one of your classes, this is going to be a video that you want to watch. Okay, so now we got second order linear and it's non-homogeneous because in my previous video this is equal to zero, now it's equal to some function. So how are we going to solve this? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to solve this one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to solve the homogeneous case. And then we're going to come back and we're going to deal with the fact that it's non-homogeneous. So I rewrite this as s squared minus 5s plus 6 equals 0. And so then I can write that as s uh, minus 2 s minus 3 equals 0. So I've got s1 is equal to 2 s2 is equal to 3. So I've got solutions. So that's my uh, case 1. So my case 1, and you got to look at my homogeneous differential equation video to understand what's going on. This is uh, not self-contained. You got to look at homogeneous first. So case 1, I'm going to say that y is equal to c1 e to the 2x plus c2 e to the 3x plus, so that's the solution to this. To make it the solution to this, I'm going to have to tack on this thing called yp. And so that right there is the particular solution. Okay, so if you think about it, I, I've got a lot of stuff going on here, but this part is kind of the general solution. Because this solves, because this part here solves this equation equal to zero, then this part here is going to, if I, if I tack it on to my general solution, to this one, it's all going to equal zero anyway. So all this stuff is going to sort of cancel out. So there's solutions that I need to be part of both of these, but they're ultimately just sort of going to cancel out. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say yp is going to be equal to, well, I got to sort of look at my reference here. Um, all right, oh, oh, this is fun. Yp is equal to, uh, let's call it W1Y1 plus W2Y2. Well, what's Y1? Y1 is going to be this one here. It doesn't matter which one I call Y1 or Y2, but let's leave it that way c1 e to the 2x. What's my y2? My y2 is equal to c2 e to the 3x. Well now, what's my w1? Well, my w1, this is pretty fun. Actually, I don't know what my w1 is. I know what w1 prime is. W1 prime is minus Y2G over Y1, Y2 prime minus Y1 prime, Y2. And W2 prime is equal to, uh, let's see, Y1G 
y1 y2 prime minus y1 prime y2. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, first off, what's g? Well, this is g right there. So let's put that right there. g is x cubed e to the 2x. Okay, now, so let's just start cranking into it. You just get into it and you just start cranking into it. I'm going to need to know the derivatives of both of those. So the derivative y1 prime is going to be equal to 2c1 e to the 2x. In this case, I don't want to just make that a different c. I want to leave that as 2c1. y2 prime is equal to 3c2 e to the 3x. Oh, actually, I think uh, if I remember correctly, I just want to slide out those c's. Right, those C's are just gonna give me are just gonna give me headaches. They're just gonna cause problems. So we're just gonna leave it like that. Okay. So now W1 prime is going to be negative y2. So it's negative e to the three x times g, which is x cubed e to the 2x over y1 minus y1 minus y2 prime so y1 e to the 2x y2 prime is going to be 3 e to the 3x minus y1 prime which is 2 e to the 2x times y2, which is e to the 3x. Okay, so this is going to be, if I simplify it out, it's going to be negative x cubed e to the 5x over, that's 3 e to the 5x minus 2 e to the 5x, so that's e to the 5x. Oh my gosh, look at that. Boom, those go away. So after all that craziness, y1 prime is going to be equal to uh, negative x cubed, which means that y1, I'm sorry, w, w1 prime. So then w1 is going to be the integral of that, or the antiderivative of that, which is just going to be negative 1 fourth x to the fourth. And then, oh, I'm going to just go on to another sheet of paper here. Uh, I'll put it right there for now. Okay, W2 prime is going to be Y1, which is e to the 2x, times um, we have G, which is x cubed, e to the 2x all over the same thing. So this, this denominator and that denominator are the same. So it's all going to be over e to the 5x. So that's going to become x cubed e to the 2x over e uh, 4x rather. 4x over e to the 5x and so that's going to be equal to x cubed e to the negative x. Okay. Now well we're just we're in it. So I haven't quite filled up a lot of pages yet. So uh, w2 is equal to the integral of x cubed e to the negative x dx. And there might be slicker ways to do this, but I'm going to do this by a series of integration by parts, and I'm going to work through them really fast. So I'm not going to really take breaks and explain stuff. You can look at integration by parts later. I'm going to say u equals x cubed, du 
is equal to 3x squared dx. dv is equal to e to the negative x dx. v is negative e to the negative x. So then I've got x cubed minus e to the negative x minus the integral of minus v uh, 3x squared dx. Then I'm going to say my, so I'm going to call that u1. So then I'm going to say u2 is equal to 3x squared uh, u2 prime. Box that. u2 prime is equal to 6x dx. This repeats uh, dv is equal to e to the negative x dx v is negative e to the negative x. And so then I've got a negative 3x squared uh, e to the negative x minus the integral again. So minus the minus of 6x e to the negative x dx. Do it again. u3 equals 6x u du3 is 6 dx dv is equal to e to the negative x dx v is equal to e to the negative e to the negative x and so then that's going to give me a negative 6x e to the negative x plus the integral of 6e to the negative x dx, and that's going to be negative 6e to the negative x dx. So, oh, sorry, no more dx. Okay, so w2 is now going to be e to the negative e to the negative x times x cubed plus 3x squared plus 6x plus 6. Okay. So now yp is equal to w1 y1 plus w2 y2 <clears throat> and so then we take my w1 from there so it's going to be negative one fourth x to the fourth my y1 is right there e to the 2x plus W2, W2 is this whole mess that we just came up with. So let's put a minus there. Minus e to the negative x. And then we got all this. Times W2, W2 is that. And so then I've got, um, I've got an e to the 2x. And I've got, because here I've got e to the 2x, e to the 3x times e to the negative x makes e to the 2x. That also has a minus on it, so I can put a minus out front. And I've got 1 fourth x to the fourth plus x cubed plus 3x squared plus 6x plus 6. So, my final solution y is equal to c1 times e to the 2x plus c2 e to the 3x minus e to the 2x 
1 fourth x to the fourth plus x cubed plus 3x squared plus 6x plus 6. And that's the answer. That is the general solution of that linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation. And that's all you're going to get on that video.